Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week we are going to be working on making a beautiful purple dress out of some gorgeous Dupiani blend fabric. But first let's dive into why. So my husband's cousin is getting married and she sent out gorgeous invitations letting everyone know that the theme is vintage Hollywood. And you can imagine, I was very excited. <laughs> Unfortunately, the first few things that came to my mind for Vintage Hollywood were those long, gorgeous gold dresses that Hollywood actresses and starlets used to wear to premieres. And this is an afternoon wedding where one certainly doesn't need to be wearing a floor-length gown trying to show up the bride. So I thought, you know what, toss it out the window and just go vintage. She said Vintage Hollywood, let's look to some of our favorite starlets. Uh, I went through, I kind of Googled some of my favorites and looked at what they wore both to some premieres as well as in films, some of their iconic looks. And there were so many wonderful things to choose from. I ended up landing on Rosemary Clooney. She has some absolutely gorgeous dresses that she wears and I happened to find one in my stash that I think is potentially an actual match for a dress that she has worn before. It's a Butterick pattern and it's pattern 6154. And it, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and so what I've gone ahead and done is I grabbed some muslin out of the closet. I do love Butterick patterns, but I have, I will admit, been burned by them before with sizing issues and so I thought you know what I'll make a mock-up really quick make sure it's going to fit really well because the, the fabric that I bought for this I have a very limited amount I bought enough for a dress but not enough to make a big mistake so I went ahead and made the mock-up out of muslin and it turns out I really like the dress but maybe not for a wedding I think I'd love to make it out of a beautiful summer floral or <laughs> a nice uh, cotton, something like that, but it didn't quite feel right for the wedding. So I went back, I went back to Rosemary Clooney pictures and I found some pictures of her in some straight skirt dresses, more of those pencil dresses that I thought might give a nice silhouette for me. I've been making a lot of full skirts and full skirt dresses lately and I thought I want something that's a little bit more fitted, um, maybe something a little sexy. Um, and so I went through my stash and I didn't have one in an actual vintage pattern, but I had a retro reprint. Also a Butterick pattern. It's the Retro 51. And I thought, gosh, this is very cute. And I think this is going to work really great. And because it is a newer printed pattern, even though it's a retro reprint, there were plenty of people online who had made the dress and had pictures of themselves in the dress. And so I got to see what it would really be when it was mocked up. And then I decided maybe that wasn't the right dress either. And then I was lost. <laughs> And so I kept going through my stash and I was messaging friends and what do you think about this and do you think that would look okay and I, I fiddled with quite a few patterns and then finally went online, went to Etsy and found from the historical atelier, I don't think I'm saying that right, anyway the historically adequate atelier has a Simplicity 4704 shelf bust dress pattern from the period. So it's a reprint, but they've taken the original pattern and they've simply drafted it and then allowed it to be sold. And so here it is. And I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to have a really beautiful silhouette up top. The only problem, of course, being that I was hoping for that thinner silhouette, um, but I like the top of this dress very well. And it is shown in the print here, over here, as being in something that would be closer to the Dubiani silk is listed as one of the materials that this dress may have been made out of. So I thought, perfect, this is gonna be it, except I don't really want a full skirt. So my thought is, what if we do a little bit of a mashup because we like a good mashup on this channel? How about the top of this shelf bust dress 
and the bottom of this Butterick Retro reprint. I think it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be smashing. And if it's not, I guess I'm gonna wear the weird polka dot dress I have in my closet. But hopefully not. <laughs> um, at any rate, I am gonna get these cut out. This is a pattern and she sends you all the instructions online. You print it off, it's a PDF pattern and then you tape everything together. So we're gonna play the jigsaw puzzle game. Then you can cut that out of your normal paper. It's just printed on normal um, eight and a half by 11 sheets off of a normal printer at home. Of course, if you have a very thin cardstock or thin um, paper, that would probably be best. It would create a slightly less bulky pattern for you. And then you can follow all of the individual um, instructions. Now I did already read through her instructions. And I'm really pleased at how detailed they are. I'll be interested to see how things go as I stitch along with them and follow along because I have never made a shelf bust dress before, though I think they are lovely and I think they have a bit of a sexy appeal without maybe being too risque. Um, they were very, very popular in the late 40s, early 50s, I believe, definitely through the 50s. And so I think there were many starlets, including starlets like Marilyn Monroe, who wore them. And I think this can be a really great option for a vintage old Hollywood wedding. So let's dive right in. Let's see how we do. And hopefully at the end of this video, I will have a dress to wear for the wedding. Okay, guys, let's get started. All right, guys, I was just about to do some alterations on this dress for the wedding I am attending. And I thought, gosh, I should really pop in and do a quick check in because it's <laughs> the fit on this is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I thought that it would be really important to point it out because I took my measurements. I know my measurements very well and I've been sewing for quite some time, and this even happens to me. Look, it's just absolutely huge. It's terrible, and it's gonna need some really significant modifications and alterations for this skirt to fit me properly, and I'm gonna need to do some modifications in the top of the bodice line to kind of maybe nip things up just a little bit to make me a little bit more comfortable and confident in it. Despite the fact that I did make a mock-up, um, there are just some tweaks that need to happen. Part of the reason I wanted to show you this is I measured myself, I referred to the pattern, this is a Butterick Retro pattern, and according to it and my hip measurement, I should be in about a size 18. Now, this pattern that I had, I bought in a size six to 14. When I purchased it, I think I was a size eight. Um, and so I took a gamble and I made the largest size that came in the package, which is a size 14. And clearly I think we can all see, maybe that's even a little bit too big. 
And I think this is something that can really discourage people. First of all, discourage you by saying, gosh, oh, I'm supposed to be a size 18, that's crazy. First of all, throw sizes out the window when it comes to making your own patterns. Don't worry about what the size says, worry about how you feel in your clothes, that's all that matters. But two, it can get to the point where you're making something, you've done all the measurements, you've checked everything twice, you've put the proper seam allowance in, and then you try something on and oh my gosh, it's, it's just, it didn't work, it's terrible, what did you do wrong? And I thought I would check in to let everybody know, if you're new at this, you didn't do anything wrong. This is a pattern, it's a mass produced pattern, and this one actually is a retro reprint, which means they probably already did some pretty significant um, changes to the pattern. Check out Backroom Finds if you want inf more information on that. But patterns, especially mass-produced patterns, are made off of one model and they just go from there. And we are all different and unique and wonderful. And so we're going to need to make alterations to the patterns and to the clothing that we are making for ourselves if we truly want to have the best fit and feel our best in it. So don't be afraid while you're in the process of making clothes to try them on. Try them on multiple steps of the way. See how you're feeling in them. See how they are fitting and make those alterations so that you can feel your best in them. As for me, I'm going to get to taking some fabric out of this skirt. Like a lot. Skirt's not attached yet. Um, wondering if I should narrow the skirt at the bottom of the legs because I did give myself two slits of kick plate in the back. This is where I'm at. I have like two hours to finish it. Alright guys, let's talk wrap up. I did get this dress done in time to wear to the wedding, although I did not get the hat done on time. The wedding was absolutely beautiful and I loved wearing this dress. I felt really, really great in it. There are a few things here and there that I would change. Um, in particular, because I had to take so much fabric out of the skirt when it lined up with the bodice, it didn't line up perfectly. And uh, over time, or in time, I guess I should say, there's always the possibility that I will take the skirt off of the bodice, trim things up a little bit, trim them in a little bit, and make it line up just a little bit better. But I still loved wearing it, and I would still honestly wear it as is, again, for another special event. I am very, very happy that I combined the two patterns, the Butterick pattern as well as the Simplicity pattern, because I really did like the fit of the Simplicity pattern better than I had liked the fit of the original Butterick pattern as it had been a short sleeve pattern that had had kind of extra material in the side that I hadn't really loved. And I'm glad that I went with a straight skirt. I really felt more confident in the straight skirt than I have been feeling lately in full skirt dresses. So I was really happy about that. I was a little bummed I did not get the hat made out of the same fabric in time for the wedding, but I did wear one of the other fascinators that I had in my stash. It's just a black fascinator with some um, feathers in it, and I really do love it. But I, I had fun attempting to make this one here. I did have all of the base materials for it, but I didn't actually follow a pattern for this fascinator, and it is just clipped and pinned into place. I definitely know there are small changes I would make if I were to make another one, but 
for my first try at making a little fascinator. I was really happy with how everything went and I really would love to have an excuse to maybe put this whole outfit on again. Maybe go out and have date night with my husband or go on a special family outing, maybe go to the theater or something like that just so I have an excuse to wear this again outside of a single wedding. If you guys liked this video and if you like working with vintage patterns, if you have any thoughts or suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I would love, love to have you on my future adventures. Thanks guys.